Wow. Hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Alex, who, who knows firsthand what it's all about. Uh, thank you so much for having me here this morning. Can I just, in order to make myself feel a bit more comfortable, get everybody to stand up for a second? <laughs> I'm going to put the mic down and shout so everybody can hear me. Should we just sh shake it loose a little bit? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean like really wake those cells. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Oh, okay. Okay, that's better. I feel a bit more relaxed now. You can sit down now. <laughs> um, yeah, before I do this, I just want to say thank you so much for that amazing intro. Um, and thank you so much for having me here this morning. I feel at home. I feel I'm amongst my people. So... First thing I want to ask you to do is, um, you know you have the question, one day I will. Can you find someone next to you or behind you or in front of you to share what is your one day I will? Go! <laughs> now! guys done? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Have you shared something? Have you? Yeah, it's amazing. The minute I said go, you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you all started saying, that's great. That's great. Okay. So the next thing I want to do before I share my story, I'd like to show you a little video. Very quick one. I get out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, for the star that she is, for the amazing soul legend that she is, please give a massive welcome to Miss Misha Paris! <laughs> Thank you for showing that. Um, I wanted to show you this before I share my story because this was a really pivotal, significant moment in my life. Oh, sorry. Because um, I have been a Misha Paris fan for as long as I can remember. Anybody know her? Too young an audience, dudes. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, she is a, a, a British global soul legend. So that was a real dream come true moment for me. So, um, yeah, so I, 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 I will come back to this. It will hopefully make some sense. Um, 
My story started back in 2003 when I moved to Edinburgh from Brighton with my then husband. Uh, we both came up here for um, really his career. Um, he was offered a career up here to, um, to uh, become a psychotherapist at Castle Craig Hospital, which is in the borders. I don't know if anyone knows about it. It's Europe's largest um, hospital for the treatment of addiction and chemical dependency. Eventually, the pair of us both became psychotherapists there, and um, we were working there. And I, um, eventually we divorced, um, but I continued working there um, with him. Um, a really big moment happened for me. Um, I still wanted my marriage to work with him. I was still in that headspace. <coughs> so I continued working there, and this one particular Christmas 2011, um, I was kind of hoping that we would both be working or something because he said he'd be working. So I said, yes, I'll volunteer, I'll work for Christmas. And I didn't go down south to my family. I have no relatives up here. So I uh, worked the Christmas. Obviously he didn't, was up to whatever he was doing. Um, and so I worked the Christmas and uh, it was a very, you know, sort of a downer time for me. I had the new year off, so I went off for 10 days and I came back to work. And the first morning that I was back at work, we used to have um, a multidisciplinary meeting every morning about our patients. Doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, you know, psych all the psychotherapists, everything, all the team. And I was sat there all suited and, you know, sorry, I keep knocking the mic, hey. I was sat there all suited and booted, in case you want to edit that so it sounds good. <laughs> we like editing. <laughs> um, and they were going around the room discussing my caseload, my patients, and yes, so-and-so, and da 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 And as they were talking, it was like a battery or something inside me was just going shh. And I thought, oh my God, what's happening to me? I'm having a breakdown. And they were discussing and they were loading more patients onto my caseload because so-and-so was on holiday and such and such, you know. So uh, as they were talking and I just didn't say anything at this point, I was like taking notes or pretending to be taking notes. And I just, as it was going around, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. So when the meeting was over, I went to my unit's manager, gorgeous guy, beautiful, fantastic psychotherapist. I went there and I said, Jack, it's empty. He said, what's empty? I said, I'm empty. He was actually coaching me at that moment. It was so beautiful. I said, I'm empty. I can't do this anymore. So um, he said, okay. But inside, I was crippled with self-doubt and fear and anxiety. I honestly thought I was having a breakdown. And I rang my sister. I dashed upstairs to my office going, oh, come and get me. Now I'm in the borders in Scotland and she's as far south as she can be in Brighton. And she goes, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we hung up and I remember walking across the car park. Now Castle Craig is in 50 acres of uh, country. You know, it's magnificent, beautiful. And I was walking across the car park going, oh my God, how am I going to drive back to Edinburgh? That's how bad I was feeling. Um, got in my car, started driving, and there was a really long and beautiful driveway out of the hospital. 
And as I started driving, I leaned over and put my tunes on. And it was a beautiful morning. I wound the window down a little bit. And as I was driving down and got hit the road to come back to Edinburgh, the further I got from there, I'm talking about it, and I've got goosebumps. The more excited I started to feel, I was like, oh my God, from one minute I was this woman thinking, oh my God, I'm having a breakdown, to, to driving and going, woohoo! You know, it was just like such a transformational moment. And that was a really um, sort of like a cocoon turning into a butterfly for me um, that time. So I need to um, uh, read the notes because <laughs> I talk too much and I forget and I'll just digress. Um, so I left and I had no job or anything. Um, and a year of serious soul searching and personal de development ensued. And uh, I turned from this sort of <gasps> to someone who was like, you know, it's now or never, you know. And you can call the process anything you like. Um, there's so many ways of looking at it, you know, different lenses of philosophies. But um, basically, at the end of that period, I stopped bullshitting myself and started to get real. You know, I uh, used to blame others for the state of my life. You know, and um, when I got real, when I got present to my life, I took responsibility for it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I like the reverb, by the way. The good, <laughs> good yeah. So the lot, you know. Um, and uh, it was really, I felt... I felt that if I was responsible for the way my life was, then I must have the power to have any life. Yeah, If I've created this, I can create anything. And it was a really amazing journey and a significant time. And the single most important thing uh, that I discovered, which I think every human being ought to discover, because it's wonderful, is to find out one's purpose. You know, what's my purpose? And in that period, I discovered that my purpose in life is to be a source of joy. That was my purpose. So. Whatever came out of that was, I was, was going to be given by that, okay? So um, you might think, well, how did this woman in a rehab, working in a rehab, end up doing this? I wasn't always a psychotherapist. I've done loads of things in my life. Um, I wish I had like three hours to talk about it, but I don't. Um, <laughs> But really quickly, before I came up here, Alex and I were having a conversation, a real generative conversation, very creative, got my juices going, talking about how nowadays people, uh, you know, nobody looks for a job that's like, for the next 25 years, I'm your man or woman or whatever. You know, it's, uh, you do a year of this and 18 months of that and two years of this because it's all about getting the experience. We're interested to know, okay, I wonder what this feels like. Back in the day when I started doing this, a business of working one year here or six months there, it was, it, it was at the cusp of this new way of portfolio working. I was part of it, 
I didn't have a name for it. I didn't know what it was called. But as a woman, as a girl, I was struggling because I'd be going for interviews and they'd go, uh, you did that for six months and then you did this for 12 months. And you know, there was no continuity in like, oh, she's worked for HSBC for 25 years, you know. So I ha didn't make any notes about this, by the way. I'm just winging it. But I was really touched, moved, and inspired by that because I get it that today, nowadays, in this new millennia, this is how it is. You know, people don't want to be doing that. So go back to my story about I wasn't always a psychotherapist and I liked doing loads of things. I was just justifying that. Uh, when, before I moved to Edinburgh, I studied music with visual practice. I became a guest lecturer at um, Brighton University. I was uh, working as a solo <coughs> artist, um, sessioning, you know, I uh, was a session singer doing lots of, you know, I was involved in the creative world and music and visual practice has always been my first love. Always, 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 always. So, um, yeah, and I thought, while I was living in Brighton, I had my own mini studio and great, beautiful baby grand piano, all sorts of instruments in my flat, da 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 da, da. It was a cool place to hang out. Um, and then my ex got this thing about coming up to Edinburgh and at the time, I thought that uh, making it in your art or your practice, whatever it is, meant a uh, like major record deal, global presence, you know, you had made it, you know? And I, because that's where I wasn't, when my ex got off offered this career up here, I was like, yes, we're going, I'll go with, that's okay. Because that was my chickening out <coughs> exit, you know? Well, we're moving. I sold the, all the recording stuff, the little mini studio, my lovely everything. And sold the flat and the piano and the instrument. So I just put it away and locked the door. I tried that, it didn't work, you know, next. So I came up here and uh, yeah, closed the door on all of that. So that's what I wanted to say. Yes, I lost track, yeah? That I wasn't always a psychotherapist. So what happened, I, when, I, when I left my psychotherapist job, um, I had no job. The way to keep the wolf from the door and food on the table, I revamped my place and turned every room in it into a bedroom and had loads of lodges. I thought, okay, let's do this. You know, it's okay when you're at uni and sharing your place with tons of people. It's a different ball game when you're a bit older. And I'm not that old yet. Um, so I thought, okay, let's do this. And it was the most magnificent time of my life. And I decided, okay, uh, I always wanted to start a choir. So that was my one day I will, okay? And it was always one day I'm gonna start a choir. So um, my one day came. And it was May 2012, I started workshops, but not like, oh, workshops like this. I was like, hey, I'm starting a choir to my mates, friends, whoever. And I'm starting it in this room I've hired in a convent in Lauriston Place, fancy coming. And I hadn't done any music for a long time. So I had to go back to square one-ish. And the first session I did, 
I only had that I had only made arrangements for one chorus of one song. I didn't have an accompanist. I didn't have anything that I usually now have at the workshops. But I did it. You know, I was shivering in my boots and as creative folk know, uh, you know, self-doubt is like, Grr! maybe you don't, but I do, I have it. And, you know, I just thought, right, enough. You know, thank you for your input. This is to my self-doubt. Thank you, I hear you, I'm just gonna do a workshop. That's <laughs> just how I had, you know, good input, but I'm moving on. So, uh, you know, I had a vision. My goodness, this vision was crystal clear to me. I could feel it, I could taste it, I could breathe it. I knew what it was. I had no idea how I was going to get there, but that's a beautiful place to be in because anything is possible. I was in a new realm of possibility. And because this was the way I was being, it just attracted that kind of people towards me. I wasn't interested with bullshitters anymore. You know, let's get real and let's do whatever it is. You know, people were holding me accountable. I loved it. I loved being held accountable. Oh, Mariam, you said it's on Tuesdays at 6.30 and I hadn't done anything. Yes, it is. I was putting stuff in the future and I was living into it, you know? And, you know, I had nothing. I just had me and a room. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know how it was gonna be. And uh, the people that came into my life that, that we just uh, gravitated towards each other were people who, um, were the type of people who I could say to, right, on Tuesday, we're going to the moon. And they would go, okay, what should we pack? <laughs> you know? They weren't saying, what? She's crazy, take her back to Castle Craig as a patient, you know? So um, that's the kind of people that uh, were in my life and attracted to me and I was attracted to. So, go back to the first workshop, eight people. No poster or flyer or none of this, you know, print things out, nothing. Second week, 16 people. Hey, people really dig this scene, you know, the, the kind, my kind of music that I like. Next week, 30 people came, and it was like, oh my goodness, I've got to get a bigger room. <laughs> and um, it just grew arms and legs, you know, and I just went with it. I didn't have, you know, I uh, didn't have any guide books or you know, this one, two, three, this is how you do. It was not narrative, you know. It was um, just occurring, you know, moment by moment by moment. So um, I had some really clever things that I wrote to make me sound really smart and bright. But hey ho. Anyway, so that to me was, I was living the dream. That was my one day I will, and I was doing it. And uh, what did that look like? Or what, it, what was it like? It was bloody hard work. <coughs> bloody hard work. Really scary. Really, really scary. Uh, you know, uh, I had to go and be in a place where angels dare to tread, you know? Is that right? Is that the way you say that? Anyway, it's a saying. You know, you have to dare to go to where angels fear to dread. You know, and, but I tell you, the fear gave me the boom boom, 
you know, the heart boom, boom, boom. That told me I was alive. Because previously I was just flatlining. I wasn't interested in that anymore. I wanted my life to be going boom, boom, boom. You know, and sometimes it's going boom, 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 and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna faint. Like before I came up here. Um, sometimes it's lonely when you wanna live the dream. Cause like, yo, you're living the dream, man. Yeah, it's hard work, it's scary, and it's really lonely. Um, but you know, it's also where passion becomes a self-perpetuating thing. You know, it's just a fountain. And it's a place where energy feels infinite. You're just constantly, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. This month is probably one of my busiest months. And I've been saying, why did I say yes to, to doing this in May? It's the busiest month, concerts, this, you know, da, 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 da. But you know, I, I said yes, and here I am. I don't know what I'm talking about. I hope it makes sense to somebody. <laughs> but it's, I'm the expert at it because it's my life and I was there, you know? And that's all I can share. So, next. Ah. Oh. The big thing that I learned was in the process of living the dream is to stop being attached to a desired outcome. Just be free to flow, okay? Yeah, I know I want to go there, but I might just want to go through the, you know, chairs and then go and have a glass of water, go switch that light on, handshake with Alex, da 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 da, you know. Eventually, I might get there. I might end up in the next room, which is much more fun, for example. I'm not saying it is. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. There is some other things I want to say. Okay. Right. So how did I do this? I, one of those people who, uh, was attracted and I was attracted, you know, as in attraction, not like mm, just, you know. Uh, I said, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? He said to me, Mariam, leap and learn to fly as you fall. Okay. And so I did. I'm still fa falling. I'm still busy <laughs> falling, but you know, I don't call it falling anymore. I call it floating. I'm just floating. Just go with the flow and see what happens and learn to keep batting those wings and just go, okay, whatever. Am I running out of time? Soon. Okay, quick. <laughs> to today. Okay. So forward everything to today. Today, God's soul is... Uh, in four cities in Scotland. Uh, myself and God Soul have had industry recognition. Um, in January, I was asked to be um, part of a BBC primetime series on TV to, as a judge. It was called All Together Now. Uh, myself and the choir have appeared on TV as part of Gareth Malone's Best in Britain or something like that. <laughs> we made it as semi-finalists, and, uh, but we didn't win because Gareth said we were too good. <laughs> um, and although we didn't win, he's contacted us and we're going on tour with him also this month. <coughs> he's on tour and we're doing his Scottish leg of his tour with him. So, you know, um, and that, the, the concert video, I'll make sense of it, that was God Soul's fifth birthday. Um, in, in wanting to set up my dream, I also wanted it to have a charitable purpose. And because I don't have any kids, I never had any kids, 
I wanted to leave a legacy. So, and I didn't want it to be a one-time event, like jump out of a plane or abseil down a building. God's Soul is a charity, and its purpose is to bring people out of loneliness and isolation. A, a community, um, a vibrant, fun community of like-minded people or um, just sharing this fun activity together. And, um, yeah, so that's, that was our fifth birthday. And it was a very significant moment for me because I, I couldn't believe that I was sharing a stage and even ended up singing with Nisha Paris. I mean, the equivalent of Lauren Hill or Mary J. Blige or Angie Stone. Does any of that mean anything? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That was who she was to me. I'm like, oh my God, you were with me all along my life. But never did I ever think that I would see and be living that dream with an incredibly broken heart because my sister, my darling sister, died 10 days before that concert. And, you know, it just, the dream was there and I was living it, but you just don't know how, it's, how the feeling is. So what I want to say is that emotions, for me, okay, emotions and creativity are very, you know, close together. And um, sometimes if a vision feels so big and impossible, it feels as if you're trying to launch a rocket to the moon, whatever the dream is. And um, this connection, this connection between feelings and creativity fuels that rocket. It's the fuel to that rocket. So um, I'll finish on this. Thank you so much. I rambled. I have no idea and I don't want to see the video. Because <laughs> um, I'll just cringe. Um, you might ask, so what's now? What's next? What's the dream now? Yeah, I have, I have dreams all the time. And my current dream is to go out busking, get in my car, drive to different places and busk, um, singing and playing the electric guitar. How am I doing that? How am I living into that dream? I've put it there. Now I've declared my intention in front of an audience. I'm going out busking. So the way I'm doing that at the moment is developing calluses on my fingertips, trying to learn to play the guitar. <laughs> Slowly, but surely. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but there it is. So um, I think that brings me to the end, but what I want to say, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, I, I'm so honored to be here. Um, I hope it's been some inspiration. Go to work and do your thing. Um, <laughs> Friday morning, 6 a.m. call. Um, just wanted to say, God Soul has a board of trustees and I'm one of them, but we're always looking for new ideas. We're always looking for creative, you know, yeah, I've got an idea. Um, you know, graphics, web developers, whatever, folk, photography, you know, we've achieved a lot, but it's, you know, we, it's open to suggestion, yeah? So, uh, thank you so much. Sorry I rambled. Um, thank you for your time, and namaste, everybody.